Greetings, colleagues. Welcome back to the Four Business English Rundown. I'm your host, Timothy Barrett. Today, we're dialing in for an electrifying session on mastering telephoning in English. Do you ever feel a jolt of nervous energy when the phone rings, wondering how to strike the right chord in English? Or perhaps it's a chord of terror because you're so nervous answering the phone. Whatever it is, fear not. I've got some great tips to zap away those telephone jitters. Before we pick up that receiver, let me start with a strong tip that will keep your conversations charged with confidence. The secret? Always prepare a short script or a list of key points before making the call. It's like having a magnetic field of words that guides you through the conversation smoothly. In fact, a lot of sales companies will have a script for their salespeople. So they know that this script works. You know, they tweak it, they study it, they make changes, and they can do it much more effectively than they think individual salespeople are going to be able to do it. So they give the script. They want the salespeople to just follow the script. Now, for you, it doesn't have to be that strict. But if you do have a script, or at least some talking points, some bullet points of what you want to talk about, it's going to help you a long way. If you are a little bit nervous when you answer the phone or you make the, the phone call yourself, by having a little list of things that you need to talk about, maybe some issues that you want to bring up or questions you want to ask, or answers to questions that you anticipate, it's going to help with your confidence level to make sure that you've thought about all of those things before the phone call even starts. So preparation, like anything, is key. But let's keep going. This is Business English Telephone Calls. Tips for clear and professional communication. Speak with clarity. Articulate your message. The first step to a good conversation is to speak with clarity. Enunciate your words like a skilled linguist leaving no room for static or miscommunication. Remember, don't rush. Speak at a comfortable pace and pause when needed to ensure your message resonates. Pausing can be a very effective technique, but I've often talked about speaking loud, slow, and clear. That's true if you're talking in person, and of course also if you're talking on the phone, where you might not have the best connection or the connection might come and go sometimes, so you really want to speak loud, slow, and clear. Another tip, avoid jargon. Stay away from technical words that might strike confusion between you and the other person. Now, of course, this depends on your audience. If you're talking to someone who's very technical, then, of course, they want you to use the technical jargon, and that's going to make you look more impressive and more credible. But if you are a technical person talking to someone who's a non-technical person or someone who's not in your field, then you want to make sure that you speak at a level that they understand. If you're not sure what level they're at, then you may want to use some technical words, but then also explain what they mean. And then maybe you can judge from their reactions or the words they say, you know, what they're more comfortable with. But generally speaking, you don't want to leave them confused. You want to make sure that they understand what you are asking or what you are explaining to them. Connection without distractions. Minimizing background noise. Now, you want to eliminate any static from your phone calls. How to do that? Find a quiet space, something like a sanctuary, free from any noise outside or from other people. If you can, close the door, silence other devices. You don't want to hear your computer or other phones ringing or making noises. You want to be focused on the conversation, focused on talking with that person on the other end of the phone. And you want them to feel that you are focused on them. If they're talking to you and they get the impression that you're doing five other things, you're checking your email, you're making yourself a cup of coffee, or you're doing other things, you're talking to other people, then that conversation isn't going to go as well as it could because they're going to think, wow, I, I'm not that important to this person. So you, you want to kind of focus on the phone call and let the other person realize that you're focused on this phone call, that, that this conversation is indeed important for you. Of course, this isn't always possible. Maybe you work in a large bullpen where there's lots of coworkers right around you. You know, this is your desk. You, you can't step away, for, go someplace else for every phone call. But if it does get too much, 
or maybe you're on your cell phone and you're outside, you're, you're walking somewhere or you know, you're somewhere that you, you can't just step outside or step into a quiet room or you can't do it very quickly anyways. You may want to explain that to the other person. You know, I, I can hear you, but I'm in kind of a loud place. I hope that you can hear me. If you prefer, we can reschedule this. I can call you back, you know, whenever is possible, you know, in, in 10 minutes or in an hour or tomorrow, you know, whatever is feasible. But you can kind of give them that option. And that also shows that you care about their wants and needs. And they might say, oh, no, I can hear you fine. I have got a quick question. You know, as long as you can hear me, let's just just get it done right now, which can be great. Or maybe they have a very in-depth conversation that they want. Maybe they got a lot of questions and maybe they can't hear you that well. So if they can't hear you well or you can't hear them that well, then it's going to be kind of a, a rough conversation. So maybe it's better to, to reschedule. And then at least you're giving them the option. The ball is in their court, so to speak. Active listening. Engage and respond. Active listening is the thunder and lightning of effective communication. Be an attentive listener in drawing in every word that your caller says. So take notes if necessary, especially if there are some kind of numbers or details involved. You know, how many they're ordering, what is the price per, per item or the total price or what model number is it? Those types of details sometimes get lost in our memory. So it's important to write them down as you're discussing it. And that can be help, very helpful that you don't make mistakes later that then have to be corrected. Another secret is to echo back key points to show that you're engaged and that you're listening. This can also make your caller feel valued. Especially if, again, if there are numbers, if there are details, if you echo them back, you repeat, okay, you're paying you know, X dollars, you're buying Y uh, units at, of model you know, Z, then it gives them a chance to make sure that you're both on the same page. Maybe they got it incorrect. Maybe they messed up one of the numbers when they were reading it to you. So now is their chance to correct it. Or at least now you both agreed, okay, these are the numbers that we, we, we discussed, and now we'll go ahead with the order or whatever it is. So it's a good chance to correct a mistake one last time. And then if there is a mistake, you know, you can feel a little bit more confident that it wasn't on your end because you did confirm the numbers. You know, you did read them back before you submitted the order or whatever it was. So it's a good, good safety feature. Essential phrases for business phone calls. Effective communication on the phone is a crucial skill in the business world. Let's explore five key phrases that will help you navigate phone conversations with clarity and professionalism. Confirming information. It's often important, as we just talked about, to confirm information. You know, it could be a time, it could be money, it could be numbers, whatever it is. This is a great phrase in that type of context. Just to confirm, dot, dot, dot. So this phrase is used to double check information, ensuring that both parties are on the same page. For example, just to confirm, we're meeting at 2 p.m. tomorrow at your office, correct? Now, like I said before, this gives them one more opportunity to make any changes. You know, if it's not right, maybe they think that you're meeting at 10 in the morning or they think you're meeting at a week from tomorrow. You know, there's, this is their chance to make that correction. Otherwise, you're going to show up at their office tomorrow at, at 2 p.m. And then hopefully they're going to feel bad because, oh, no, that's not what is that what I said? Oh, yeah, they did confirm it. You know, gee, that was my mistake. Uh, so at least they recognize that it's their mistake, but hopefully it, it'll correct the problem. And they say, oh, no, I didn't mean 2 p.m. I meant 10 a.m. You know, can we meet at 10 a.m.? And then you can work it out. Imagine that they meant 10 a.m. You're ready to show up at 2 p.m. And then you get a phone call at 11 a.m. Very upset that you didn't show up for their 10 a.m. Uh, meeting. And, you know, when you say, oh, no, I thought it was at 2 p.m., you know, you could imagine, maybe they don't even believe you. You know, they think, oh, no, we said 10 a.m. You know, now you're just making up stories. Now you're lying. You know, you're just making it worse. And all of a sudden, that business deal just kind of disappears. So it's a very good idea to confirm important information. Next one. Offering assistance. And when you're in the business world, it's always good to offer assistance. Try to help out the other side. The phrase, how may I assist you? This is a polite and service-oriented phrase to show your willingness to help. For example, good morning, how may I assist you today? 
this is very helpful, especially in the beginning of a conversation where you have no idea. You know, maybe you don't even know who they are, what they want. Uh, obviously, if you have an idea that, oh, I know there's a problem with whatever, you just want to dive right into it. They might be upset if you, you say, you know, how may I assist you? When they say, you know how you can assist me, you need to fix this problem. But if you have no idea, you haven't dealt with them before, or you're not sure what the issue is, this is a great way to start off. It shows that you're willing to listen to them and find out what the problem is. Requesting clarification. The phrase, could you please clarify? Or could you please explain? When information is unclear, this phrase helps you seek clarification without sounding confrontational. For example, I didn't quite catch that. Could you please clarify your point? So this is also very important. You don't want to be too confrontational. If they do have a complaint, they have a problem, you want to solve it. You don't want to get into a shouting ma match or an argument about it. You just want to solve the problem so that you can continue doing business or you start to do business with them. So this is a very neutral way to say, you know, gee, I, I'm not understanding what you're saying or I didn't catch it. You know, can you explain it with a little bit more detail? so I can understand what the issue is. Scheduling and confirming meetings. Would date and time work for you? This is a respectful way to suggest a meeting time and confirm the other person's availability. For example, would next Tuesday at 10 a.m. work for you for our conference call? I think a phrase like this is very helpful when you're trying to set up a meeting, whether it's a virtual meeting or in person, it really doesn't matter, but it gives the, them a, a date and time to start with. So maybe they say, oh no, oh no, 10 a.m. doesn't work, can we make it 11 a.m.? Or maybe Tuesday doesn't work, but could we do it on Monday or Wednesday? You know, So at least you're getting the ball rolling. You're starting the conversation, you're narrowing down what time both of you can meet. And the last one? Number five, closing the conversation. Thank you for your time. This expresses gratitude for the conversation and acknowledge the other person's time. For example, thank you for your time today. I look forward to our continued collaboration, or I look forward to meeting you again on Tuesday. So integrating these phrases into your phone conversations will not only enhance clarity, but also contribute to a more professional and positive communication experience. All right, hopefully you got something good out of this video. If you did, then let's conquer that like button and make it ours. Stay tuned for more electrifying content on the 4 Business English Rundown. Until then, have a good conversation, and I'll see you soon.